Hey everybody, this is Perch, and here's a, uh, a mail, and it was about something I recently uh, watched. It, was, it just felt kind of sad um, when, when all was said and done. So let me read this mail to you, and we'll talk about it. It says, hey Perch, I'm sure chances are you've seen what I'm writing to you and about, and I've already gotten about 15 mails, but at the same time, maybe you haven't. Heidi McDonald, EIC of ComicsBeat.com, attended the Diamond Retailer Summit recently, within 24 hours of this writing, and was tweeting throughout the entire event. Unfortunately, about uh, random shit of uh, Elon Musk. Uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but you know, also not. Uh, however, one tweet of what she saw, which is getting a large amount of attention, was when Dan Didio gave a keynote speech and apparently admitted, we lost a generation of readers. They didn't buy superhero books. They went somewhere else. I must admit, I was stunned by this admission, but also became frustrated. I read those comments and thought, okay, so whose fault was it that they went somewhere else? Now, I imagine that when he says we in we lost, that perhaps he meant Marvel and DC, but for the sake of the argument, let's just say he's talking about DC Comics. There wasn't any tweet that indicated that Didio gave an answer to my question. I imagine if pressed further on it, he would give some vague non-answer like, I don't know for sure what happened. I'm sure there's more than one answer. It's probably not for me to say. I think what frustrates me and probably others is, where was his clarity 10 years ago? Where was it when he decided that Cassandra Cain had to turn evil? Where was it when he described Tim Drake as the boring Robin? Where was it when he was lamenting that reprints of older stories were selling better than the current batch of comics he was putting out? Where was this clarity? He seemed to be most out-of-touch person in a position of absolute authority at one of the biggest comic book publishers in charge of some of the most iconic characters in existence. And it's important to note that I do not, uh, I do not put all the blame over what's happened across the 10 years or more squarely on his shoulders. I think Jim Lee who is co-publisher with Didio, deserves equal blame, but everyone seems to either forget or ignore him because he's such a good artist, as does Bob Harris. I'll throw, this is me now, I'll throw in one other name that people will hate, as does Jeff Johns. You may, you may, that may hurt, you may not like that answer, but you know these are the people who are in charge. Anyway, back to the mail. For that matter, who, why are comic pros so reluctant to admit they made a mistake? Granted, I've chatted with some who admit they would have done differently in certain situations, but I doubt you'll ever see Joe Quesada admit that breaking up Spider-Man and Mary Jane wasn't what fans wanted, or Bendis to admit that aging up John Kent denied a lot of fans of watching the character grow and evolve. Anyway, I wondered if you had any thoughts on the matter. I know I've written to you in the past about Didio, but I like I, but like I said, I think an admission of, of losing not just some of the audience, but an entire generation of readers is a big admission. I'd love to know what you think. Um... Unfortunately, there's so many things to go into uh, with this uh, question, and so I'll, I'll try and take some of them on. I, I think first off, you know, whether it's fair or unfair, if you're in a leadership position in the company, you bear responsibility for what's going on. That's why, yeah, Jim Lee, Didio, Bob Harris, Jeff Johns, Joe Casada, Axel Alonso, CB Sabolsky, uh, Dan Buckley. I'm plenty. There's there's plenty of people. Who, but when you're in a, a leadership manager position, at the end of the day, it's 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 your responsibility to you know sink or swim to make this work. That's why they pay you more. That's why you're in charge. You don't get to say, uh, well, you know, I, I know I'm in charge and I'm getting a higher salary. I know I I'm the decider on things, but it's everybody else's who's to blame. It's it's the kids that are at fault, um, and that that goes on quite a bit. The second thing you addressed in this this uh, mail, which I think is a video all in itself, is why won't people admit mistakes? Weirdly, and um, I apologize, a number of the people who regularly listen to this channel who are in the comic industry, I think are not this way, and I suspect that's why they maybe listen to this channel, but I think they would agree that it's very common for people in comics to just refuse to want to admit any culpability, any mistake, anything that did wrong, and, and the reality is one of the things they teach you in, in kind of big companies and real industries is that you're not going to be perfect 100% of the time. You are going to make mistakes. Now, that may come out in a number of different ways when I say you can fail fast or it's how you recover from your mistakes that counts or any number of those things. Comics, for whatever reason, does not prescribe subscribe to that ideology. Instead, comics seems to subscribe to the if I admit any wrongdoing, if I admit any mistake, I am weaker. And when you get to the leadership position, some of these companies, you absolutely have that. And so what you often see is that these people will just talk about how everything is going great, that the sales are wonderful, life is great, everything is super. And then when they're invariably fired or they leave, then suddenly they get very reflective. Ooh, maybe things weren't that good, but still not their fault. 
Instead, they somehow become these wise elders. You're going to start seeing it from Joe Q soon now that he's out of uh, Marvel. You're going to start to see him saying things like, well, yeah, we we didn't connect with the readers after Secret Wars. And we didn't, you know, but again, it will be all phrased in a way that kind of makes it sound like "Mm, I'm wistful. These things happen that were outside of my control. And, And it's like, will we? It's one reason, by the way, I think people like Jim Shooter is because Shooter has said in interviews, yeah, I screwed that up. He takes responsibility. Now, that's that's not saying Shooter is the most amazing person in the world, but you will notice a difference in his interviews because he does cop to the things he did wrong. It's just, it's a big, it's a big factor of, I think, why people like him. But the other piece to this, so I, I guess I too am frustrated because a lot of these things and a lot of the problems in comics are super obvious to anyone paying attention. And if you're inside the company and you're actually seeing the numbers and you're seeing how all this stuff goes down, none of this stuff is a surprise. And it feels like watching a slow motion train wreck half the time, one that is easily avoidable. It's like, hey, you know, uh, why is it that we can't admit any uh, fault or wrongdoing, but we are okay going out there and insulting our own characters? And one thing that shocks me, you mentioned it with the you know, Didio describing Tim Drake as the boring Robin, it blows me away that creators, both freelancers and people within the company are very comfortable saying things like, well, this character sucks. And I I don't know, you know, why would anyone care about this? This, I, you know, I've, I've seen people at Marvel talk, you know, in public about what a boring, dumb character Captain America is or how hard Superman is to write. And what shocks me about that is, Where are these people who are, you know, can say, hey, maybe relaunching that book 1800 times over the course of two years was a bad idea. Hey, maybe uh, putting these untested writers on these comics that uh, needed to get the character over was a bad idea. No, they they will refuse to say anything like that. But on the other hand, they're very comfortable going out there and saying, you know, who really cares about Deadpool anymore? I never liked him. Like, bitch, you make Deadpool like you can't. (laughs) You're not supposed to say that. That's that's the part that that blows me away. Is they're they're very comfortable trashing their own IP, but not necessarily owning their own mistakes. But the the part that I guess I'll conclude with is the statement itself. We lost. Well, yeah, I think a generation of readers was lost. It was lost for a couple very obvious things. You know, number one, comics had a problem already of having a very established collector audience. That, uh, that had been played to for maybe a little too long. Not in the 2010s and up, but from 1990 to 2010, the comic industry went a little too hard into the collector market and didn't do what it did in the 80s, which was attract new readers. When I say attract new readers, I don't mean going off to random corners of the planet and trying to say, hey, you're a demographic we'd like to put on our wall. Why don't you read our comics? I mean new readers as in kids. So as much as, you know, people laugh and, and uh, you know, don't take things like the epic line and uh, the, sorry, the star line at Marvel seriously, it did a really good job of getting kids enamored in comics. And because it was a line for kids, they could sell it in schools and they could do other things with it and, res- and meet very little resistance. And what it did was it created readers that would one day, you know, grow up and, and get comics. In the 90s, a lot of the titles that Image did appealed to those those kids who started reading in the eighties and like those books. And they're suddenly they're, you know, young blood and wildcats and all that kind of stuff's exciting. But one thing you don't see in the, in the nineties or the two thousands or the 2010s is any real, you know, attempt to get people from the ages of say six to, I don't know, 18 into comics, almost nothing. And that's the generation that instead was served by Dogman, scholastic and manga. What's crazy about this is uh, all the excuses as to why those that group would never read comics. Oh, those people like uh, they, they they like phones and Game Boys and and you know they're not gonna. First it was Game Boys and then of course it was phones and it was like they're they're into you know online gaming and all that stuff. They're not gonna buy comics. Those just it's 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 absolute bullshit. They're they at the same time they're heavily consuming manga. Now, why? Because manga appealed to that audience. Manga came in and said, hey, we're we're pretty easy. We're relatively cool. It's a cheaper price point. You can get a complete story here. We're not going to lecture you like your parents. We're just going to give you something to enjoy. 
And they did, and it worked. And the other factor here, which was something that uh, I was talking with somebody about uh, earlier today, um, is it broke the generational gap of people who, you know, had read comics when their kids grew up and had kids of their own, and then one sit down with their kids and say, hey, let's read Spider-Man together. Let's read Superman together. Let's read Batman together. There was, there, there was no easy way to do that. And you guys have heard it. I've done videos where I've, I've sat my kids with me and tried, and it won't work. It's just it. It's not appealing. You can't sit down with a copy of AXE with your you know your twelve year old and say, "Hey, let's really enjoy these comics together," because it's incomprehensible to those kids. It's impossible. You're far better off if you're a parent trying to get your kid into comics so you could share that love with them. You're far better off digging into the back issues and pulling out those '80s comics of Transformers or GI Joe or Justice League or Batman or or uh, Avengers, or whatever it happens to be. Um, I had some comics sitting that I was taking photos of or something else, and uh, the Mutant Massacre issues were there, the originals. And uh, my daughter comes in and just starts reading through them. And it, 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 it caught her. She got excited to read the whole thing. I have modern comics out there, you know, comics at the shop that are getting ready to go out to the shelves. Kids pick them up and just zero interest. We lost that generation. And, and they, they didn't, if they didn't stop reading, they kept reading, they just went somewhere else. And the answers, you know, the answers were too expensive. Stories were by and large, you know, killing time, too smart, cutesy stories that relied on, you know, background information, you know, knowledge of the lore. And I'm not talking continuity. I'm talking, you know, here's why an inside joke about the X-Men playing baseball is funny. That's not going to work with a kid. Too many comics where you pick it up and there is zero action in the book, in, in the comic, zero, where you can pick up an issue of Dogman and it's far, far more action going on there. Um, it, it, it just, you can go down the line, uh, art that kind of is random and all over the place. It just, for la you know, for, for better, or for worse, if you pick up one piece, you pick up Demon Slayer, you pick up Chainsaw Man. One thing you do notice is the art stays consistent for say 200 plus pages and it's drawn in such a way that feels like it has a mass market kid appeal. A lot of the art that you see in comics is different from issue to issue and often doesn't. And the action inside often doesn't appeal either. So a, a generation is gone. Now, it doesn't mean you can't get them back, but it does mean relatively quickly you got to get your head on straight and you got to start putting out books that they can actually go for. That a parent could sit down with their kid and go, let me let me share this this." love this this hobby that I have with you. Let me let me share this amazing thing with you. Recreate those moments. You can do it. But you know, you got to do it fast. I don't know. I saw that comment too and it's just you shake your head because it 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 was so full of hubris and and it was just just painful. Just painful to see that coming out of Didio like uh and and the way apparently from some friends uh, uh, who were there said he like he delivered it with this smugness like he's you know I'm Moses I'm coming down with this valid this this super interesting information that that uh that you know nobody's had this observation before and you just you just wanted to go up there and it, I'm, you don't advocate violence you're just gonna go over there and pop them in the mouth like you are in charge you own this you do others too but certainly you own this you don't get to stand up there now and say man well, I don't know what happened we lost a generation of readers Damn Nintendo, their addictive games. Yeah, no. Anyway, thanks for the mail. Thanks for, uh, yeah, I'll have more to say on this topic in the weeks to come. Thanks for listening.